Am I on? Ah, yay, I'm on. Beat me up, Scotty. Everybody likes Star Trek, don't they? Yeah. Good morning. Thank you for making the experiment work. Okay? I'll explain more later. I'll explain more later why everybody is sitting up front. Okay? So, it is good to have all of you here today. Um, you survived the polar vortex, and so did I, but I went in the teeth of it. I went up to Iowa <laughs> all week. So, I wanted to thank Debbie and, and Wayne for covering for me uh, pastorally. But uh, uh, people, we need to lift up in our prayers. Um, Gary Bowling has, um, his, his leukemia has come back. And so please keep him in your prayers. Um, they're going to up his chemotherapy on it. So please keep him in your prayers and Letitia in your prayers as well. Um, another person, you all have not met her, but she is a relative of mine, my stepmother. Um, Shirley Robertson, um, the tumor in her stomach has continued to grow even though she's on chemotherapy. So please keep her in your prayers. They upped her chemotherapy uh, and she's not handling it very well. No one would, okay? So please keep Shirley Robertson in your prayers. Um, Edith Lavalley is still in room 138, still getting stronger. Uh, unless someone knows something differently, all I know is she's there getting strong. When I left last Sunday, she was the last person I saw, and uh, she looked at me and went, hi! Where the first time she was there, she went, hi. So, um, she was not feeling good. The first time we saw her, did, you know, was, you know, first time you and I saw her, she, was, she looked tired. And so she's getting her rest, and she's getting on her feet, and hopefully, okay, last week was the first week, this week would be the second week. Hopefully she'll go home at the end of this week. That's her goal anyway. So please keep her in your prayers as well. Um, let me think. Anybody else we need to lift up in our thoughts? Oh, we need to lift Mark up in prayer for his knee. He fell. Um, and the knee that he had the surgery on is not acting right. So he needs to go back to his doctor and find out, hey, what's going on? So, yes. Well, hopefully it'll respond. Hopefully it'll respond. Our prayers are also with Everett too as he deals with his cancer as well. Any other joys or any other? Yes. George Stewart. Uh, we think he might have had a diabetic reaction. Yeah, and as we all know, diabetes is the X factor that causes the rebound or re-effect and all that, yeah. So hopefully uh, he, will, um, he will heal up soon. Our prayers are with him and, and with um, his family as well. Any other joys or concerns we lift up? Yes, sir. Oh wow, it was coding then, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Our prayers are with him as he goes through that process. Yes, sir.
Congratulations. Healing's a blessing, isn't it? Our, our prayers are with Phoebe and with, with everybody. I know that that's an up and down experience with her. So it is, yeah. So our prayers are with them as well. Any other joys or concerns? Yes, sir. What? Ron. Thank you. Uh, Ron called Joe and said that he was kind of feeling dizzy about things and he went to the ER this week. And so uh, he just wanted to stay home and get better. He's going to go to his doctor on Wednesday or something like that. So I got to check on him and see how he's doing. So I think all that work we did to get him moved finally caught up with him. Just my opinion. <laughs> so, yeah. Very good. If there is nothing else then, let us lift up our joys and concerns to the Lord. Let us have a time of sign of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you on this day. It's, a, it's kind of a warm day. But we are thankful to be, de to be together and to be moved and to be healed and to be touched by your Holy Spirit. We have lifted up many people in prayer today, those who are struggling with cancer, those who are sick, those who are struggling with heart issues, those who are dealing with issues in their lives, like depression and other issues. We pray that you bless them with strength. Let them know they are not alone. Let them know that they are loved. Let them know that you are, and all of us are walking with them during this time of need. We pray that you bless us and guide us. Help us to continue to reach out, maybe in new and different ways, to people who are in need, as your son did. We pray that your spirit will be upon us, to move us, to look around us, open our eyes, take our blinders off, and to see those around us in need. Help us to look at them, not just at ourselves, but at other people too who are in need and help us to reach out to them. We pray that you be with the soldiers and their families and the veterans and their families. We pray for other Christians who are gathering in your name, all the churches. We pray for the ministers who are struggling physically also. We pray for all those in need in the community of Ottawa. We pray that you be with our leaders as well of our, of our community and our county and our state and our country. We have many prayers, dear Lord, and we lift them up to you as we pray the prayer your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Where'd you go? You coming up? Miss Kathy's bringing her, of course. Come on. Okay, very good. Hey, can I sit with you? Since you're the only one here. No. You sure about that? Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you. Can I ask it? <laughs> what? Yeah, I got a question for you. What do you like to do? 
You like to run around? You like to read books? You like to watch TV? Yeah, you do, because I, I, when I come and babysit you, that's all you want to do is either read or watch TV. Well, this is what I want you to think about if you can, okay? What you like to do can help other people. Hide and seek. Hide and seek. Yeah, you like to play hide and seek, do you? Do we like to play hide and seek? Okay. You can love other people. Yeah. You know that? You can love other people. You can love Miss Kathy. You can love even me. You love me? <laughs> you know how to love people. And when you love other people, you're doing what God wants you to do. Okay? Can you do that for me? Can you love other people? Okay. Here, can I hold your hand and we pray? Thank you. Lord, I pray that you help us to do your love and to love everybody around us who needs it. Amen. Miss Kathy's back there. You ready to go? On mark? Get set. Go! God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting birds and flowing fountain call us to rejoice in Thee. As the deer panteth for the water, so so long it after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship Thee. I want You more than gold or silver, only You can satisfy. You alone, all the real, the giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart desire and I long to worship thee. And God's people said, Amen. You what? Nah, you're not holding me up at all. Just make sure you're okay.
Good morning. Good morning. Be reading from uh, Luke, fourth chapter, verse 21 through 30. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Assuredly, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you that truly, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel at the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman of the Syrian. So all of those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city. They led him to the brow of a hill, which on their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then passing through the midst of them, he went on his way. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. You gonna go raise Cain? Pardon? You gonna go raise Cain? Are you gonna go raise Cain? No. Oh, okay. I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> you got the cane. You can raise it. Yeah, Steve back there sent an email to me. It was on Messenger, and it said, uh, "Every time you know we should treat the minister like we did a coach. That every time a minister gets a new point, I should get Gatorade poured on me." <laughs> and I said, "Go for it! I dare you! One of these days, yeah." That's what they say. Pow, zing, zoom. Sounds like uh, Jackie Gleason, right? Okay, sure. Okay, I got a point here, and you all proved it so far. How mad were you when you realized these back pews were cordoned off, and you had to go sit somewhere else than where you normally sit? Really mad? Really mad? <laughs> Um, if you notice something, it's just not Baptists who do that. It's just not Methodists. I think all Christians do that. What's funny is I was at a minister's retreat this past week, and interesting, no one wanted to sit in the front tables. Everyone wanted to sit in the back tables. So I sat up front with about three or four other people by ourselves. So we understood what he had to say <laughs> because we were right there. I know how to make you mad. Yeah, I don't go. The look, hey, if I didn't twerk you a little bit here, because I was waiting to see what the reaction was from all of you, and some of you said, "What's this? What's this? Why'd you do that? You're making me uncomfortable. Why is this cordoned off? Why can't I sit where I want to sit or where I normally sit?" Oh, don't go. I know the look on some of those faces, Ruby. Uh, <laughs> Wanda. Yeah, I know. Paybacks are bad. Yeah, true. So, Jesus knows how to make people mad, too. In this scripture, he made them really mad. Actually, the scripture before, last week's scripture, he made them mad to begin with because he basically told them in the scripture last week, I came here to help the needy, the poor. I came here to do the work to help other people in need. 
and not just the people of God. And then he went on in this scripture to tell us, can you go to the beginning, please? Began to say to him today, this is scripture fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him. In other words, they were feeling good about him. You are a hometown boy who's doing good things. You are healing the needy. You're healing people. You're helping people. We're get, it's getting back to us from Capernaum, what you've done. So we think a lot of you. And then it goes, aren't you Joseph's son? We know where you come from. And then he says, Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, do here in your hometown what you have heard that you did at Capernaum. By the way, that line, heal thyself, you see it at his crucifixion. Just thought I'd point that out to you. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you, there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah, who's Jewish, was not sent to any of them, but to a widow who was not Jewish. And he goes on and says again, and there was in Israel a lot of leprosy. And Elijah, the prophet, was not sent to another Jewish guy to heal. It was a non-Jewish person, a Gentile. First, he basically tells them, I'm doing something different here. Because God did something different, even in our own scriptures. They didn't like that. You caught that a little bit? They didn't like being told something different about their scriptures and about how they interpreted God. They didn't like that. See, he was doing something different. See, he was not just healing Jewish people. He was healing Gentiles. The Roman soldiers whose daughter needed to be healed, he healed her. The Syrophoenician woman who came and asked for her daughter to be healed, and he kind of put, okay, he did put her down. And she changed his attitude, and she was healed. When he healed the lepers, the ten lepers, he even healed the Gentile, the, the Samaritan one. You see, he was, came to do things differently, and no one liked it, or a lot of people didn't like it. And yet a lot of people liked it. He went to see people who were put down in society, tax collector. You know the famous tax collector? Zacchaeus? They didn't like that. They didn't like the fact that he went to, quote-unquote, a sinner's home. Didn't like that. And put him down for it. You're going to go eat with sinners? Yeah, I am. I'm going to save him. Different. And yet, they didn't like it. Has it changed? Has it changed? I'm going to tell you in many ways, no, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Three years ago, I was invited to a meeting here in town. Sheriff Jeff Richards called all of the organizations that deal with homelessness and deal with the needy within the community. Huge room, lots of people. He said, this is what I need help in. How can you help? I want to, I want to create a place where men coming out of prison, out of jail, can go and get help and not, not start back over their old way of doing things. I want to start a program. Can you help? Can we do something? Something I noticed real quick. Yes, we can help. Yes, we can help. Landlord's Association was there. Quiet. We got to the point where when it came down to the meetings, we were meeting once a month. At the most, what started out as 20 or more people, five, five. 
We even got it to the point where we had an organization coming in who was going to run the program for us, Oxford up in Lawrence. All we needed was a place for people to go to, to live. You know what we heard? The egotistical side of, not in my place, not in my yard, not in my community. You want to know something sad? These were good Christian people. These were good Christian people who were pillars of their church, leaders in their community. Not in my backyard. Then we started hearing more things like that. And it's died. Because no one wanted it. It was something different, something new. And no one wanted it. The good Christian people didn't want it. Ran into it at a church in Buffalo where I was at, Buffalo, Missouri. This school district had the highest dropout rate in the state of Missouri. That's a big state. And they had one of the highest dropout rates. And so we looked around, and the, the leaders, some of the leaders within the church and me looked around, and, and we realized, what if we started a preschool? What if we started a preschool? Not a daycare, but a preschool. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference. A preschool is someone whose job is to get kids ready for school. Well, the congregation had the vote on it. And it wasn't even close. It won. The church said, yeah, let's do this. We had a woman coming up from Springfield who was going to start it and going to run it. And she started it. Her youngest son went to it. And it was going just fine until the, the head of the, of the preschool got asked if she could come back and run a bigger preschool. Do you blame her? No. Because she wanted the bigger preschool. Fine. A group of five people decided within that church, we're not going to do this. Because their ego said, we don't want it here. And they raised real quick, let's close it. Even though we were looking for someone else to run it, let's close it. Because that group of five didn't get what they wanted. And it closed. Has the times changed? Biblically. Have, has time changed? There was a daycare here at one time. Has time changed? Do we let our ego, like the people in the scripture, let our egos get in the way of doing God's work? Because that's what Jesus didn't do. Jesus didn't let his ego get in the way of doing God's work. And so the question for all of us is, are we going to let our egos get out of the way to do God's work in our lives and in our churches and in our community through us and for us? Are we willing to do that? That's the question. Because that's what we're left with. Jesus tells them, I have come to do something different. The scriptures back me up. Do you want to join me? Because after this scripture, he starts calling his disciples. He starts calling them, come fish with me for people. Let's do something different. He wanted to do something different. You know what different to him is? Different is love your neighbor as you love yourself. Different to him is forgive those who hurt you. Don't hold grudges. Different to him is to love as God loves us. To forgive no matter what. That's different. 
If someone is in need, help as you can. Help as you can. He came to ask us to do the same things. And the question for all of us is, do we want to do them? Are we on the side that wants to help, or are we on the side that goes, hmm, not in my yard? What are we going to do about it? By the way, we still hear people talk about the food or the meal that we have, Free Friday Feast. When I first got here, I had people come up to me and go, what do you think of that? It's fantastic. Great ministry. Let's keep doing it. Oh. They're being lazy. Can't they feed themselves? Quote. That's a quote. They should be doing it on their own. We shouldn't be helping them. Hmm. Are we loving our neighbor as we love ourselves? If we love ourselves so much and we feed ourselves, why can't we feed our neighbor? We don't want it to reflect bad on us. And by the way, I've heard that at other churches, not just ours. So it is an attitude that everybody has because it's different. Now, there's, now they're everywhere, by the way. Up in Des Moines, on the north side of Des Moines, they have, they call them neighbor meals. And they go around to the churches in North Des Moines, Epworth United Methodist, Highland Park Christian Church, the Presbyterian Church. They're all within a, what, five mile of each other? Yeah. They go around and they have, and they take turns. So it's nothing new. It is something that people are doing and they want to feed their neighbor. They're dropping the ego and saying, how can we help? There's a story of a young man who went to the Vietnam War. He came back without half his leg. And he came back a changed man. He came back because his, this minister t grew up with this man. And he went off to war. He came back. He was a changed man. He came back with half a leg, his right leg. This is in West Texas, by the way. Yeah, south, that way. And he started talking about, you know, we shouldn't be prejudiced. This is in the 60s. We should not be prejudiced at all. And God told me this. Do you know what the reaction was? Boy, the war sure changed him. The minister's dad even said that out loud. Now, he didn't go and do it at his church. He did it differently. He went to individuals. And he had a meal with them or talked with them about his ideas about not being prejudiced. This is Texas in the 60s. Suddenly, the minister's father, who was on the school board, brought up the question. This is the man who said, the, you know, judged the soldier, the veteran, and said, you know, the war changed him. Instead of preju being prejudiced about him, he started listening to him. And because he was on the school board, he brought up a motion to let's start desegregating and bringing everybody together. Oh, all hell broke loose. And yet, it happened. How about us? Can God do something different through us? For us? Not just for us, but through us? Is there something different out there 
that we could do as a ministry on top of. Now we tried one time. We tried to do a Wednesday night at Hope House. And people got sick and people quit wanting to do it. I'm asking us, why can't we do that again? What stops us for doing something like that? What can we do that God wants us to do? Let us do what God wants us to do. You want your church to grow? You want your church to make a difference in people's lives and in our community? You want to do something that God wants us to do? I wonder what it would be. I wonder what it would be. We talk a good game. But when are we going to start doing what God wants us to do? By the way, next Sunday, you'll sit back where you always sat. <coughs> Unless for some reason you want to move up front again. That's up to you. But I wanted to get a point made to you. Instead of getting mad about your seat being taken away, why don't you get mad about the things that are happening within our community that need help? And do something about it. That's my point. What do you want to do that God wants us to do? Let us pray. Lord, it's not easy sometimes to do your work here on earth. Our egos get in the way. Our selfishness gets in the way. Even our apathy, we don't care as long as I got my own, gets in the way. May your spirit come down upon each one of us. May it convict us of what we don't do and help us to see and move us to do what you want us to do. Whatever it is, help us to bring it to reality for your sake, not just our sake. And God's people said, I had a God moment during a communion service at the Minister's Institute in, in the Upper Midwest region. And the God moment was this. The theme of the whole thing was crossing, cr crossing, crossing thresholds in your life. And what keeps us from doing that. Now, what they wanted us to do, and I could have asked you the same thing, but I decided not to. I figured this was enough. I didn't want to blow your minds. They had us write down the things that keep us from fully crossing, cro cro crossing, it's amazing what Sudafed will do to you. Crossing thresholds that keep us from doing the things that God wants us to do. And we were to write them on this notepad, on the sticky pad, and then they had doors as a tripod in the middle. And after you had communion, you went and stuck it on the doors. It gave me the ability to let go of the things that have kept me from doing what God wants me to do. It gave me that ability to give it to God. Now, those of you who have been in Bible studies with, we have done that, haven't we? Where we've written down the things that, that we want to give to God, our problems and our needs, and then I tell you to crumple them up and to throw them towards the basket or throw them in the air or to spiritually do that. When you come to this table, there is a threshold. And the threshold comes when you have that bread and that cup. 
and you take them, you have crossed the threshold of love and of grace and of hope and of peace and all those things and you have gone into God's realm. May we cross that threshold with open arms. Think of this as we sing our hymn of communion. In this very room, there's quite enough love for one like me. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy for one like me. And there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away any gloom. For Jesus, Lord Jesus, is in this very room in this very room there's quite enough love for all of us and in this very room there's quite enough joy for all of us there's quite enough love and quite enough power to chase away any gloom. So Jesus, it's up to you. Who? There you go. In this very room, there's quite enough love for all the world. And in this very room, there's quite enough joy for all the world. Enough joy, quite enough power to chase away any gloom. For Jesus, Lord Jesus, is in this very room. The time came when Jesus and disciples went to the upper room. He took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took a cup, he poured wine into it, and he blessed it. And he said, This is my blood which is shed for you, and this is new covenant in my blood, that I am your Lord, you are my people. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. It means every time you take this cup, you take this bread, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. All those who follow Jesus Christ and take him as our Lord and Savior are invited to come and participate in this meal of remembrance. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this group who gathers to honor you today. We ask your help, your guidance, in that of keeping our prejudices away, clear away. That we can make our judgments on the people, not on the appearances. As we take this cup and this bread, may we recall the teachings of your son for whom we are honoring with this bit of his body and blood. All this we ask in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. going to stand there? Are you going to stand there?
Please rise if you can. I'll get them for you. I'll get them for you. So you just pray. We know. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Thank you. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Heavenly Father, as we take these gifts, which are given to you freely, may we disperse them properly so that we may expand your word to those who may not have heard it. We ask all of this and the blessings for those who have not been able to join us today. Amen. Amen. If you haven't caught on today, 
Am I on? There we go. If you haven't caught on today, God wants you to do something. And don't think he hasn't. Because he does. God wants you to do something. God wants a relationship with you to begin with. And so the question is, do you want to come and make that confession of faith? The beginning point of doing what God wants us to do. If you haven't done that, I invite you to do so. If you'd like to rededicate your life and say, Lord, I've let a lot get in the way, not just my ego, but other things get in the way of doing what you want me to do. Help me to remove them and do what you want me to do. I invite you to come and rededicate your faith. If you'd like to transfer your fellowship to our fellowship so that we can grow in our faith together and to learn what God wants us to do, I invite you to do so as we sing our hymn of invitation. Christ my Savior live in me from day to day by his love and power controlling all I do and say may his beauty rest upon me may seek the lost to win and may they forget the channel seeing only him few things you don't even have to sit down for this daylight bible study is, is this tuesday from one until three and disciples women's fellowship has been changed from wednesday the sixth to thursday the seventh of this month so please keep that in mind as well gracie is there anything else i need to say Mm. <laughs> and she has crackers in her mouth. Yes, Friday feast, sign up to help out. We invite you to do so. Any other announcements or not? Very good. Go into this world. Know that God has something for you to do. And don't let anything get in the way of doing it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and God's people said,